Lighting can make or break a photo. It can influence the mood, story, sharpness, and overall quality of the image. And when it comes to certain styles of photography, such as portraits, there's one type of lighting that is very popular, and that is soft lighting. As a professional portrait photographer, soft lighting is my go-to type of lighting for flattering and beautiful looking portraits. With that being said, in this guide, I'll be covering everything you need to know about soft lighting, including what it is, when you should use it, how to create it, and how it differs from its counterpart, hard light. So let's dive right in. Soft lighting photography is a type of lighting that produces soft, diffused light and avoids harsh shadows. For example, soft light is often found outdoors on an overcast day when the clouds are out acting as a natural light diffuser. You can also find soft light during golden hour or blue hour when the sun is rising or about to set. You can also find soft light when using a diffuser on a studio light. I'll be touching more on how to get soft light later in this guide, but those are just a few examples. When it comes to lighting in photography, we mostly have to pay attention to the quality of light, the intensity of light, and the direction of light. Soft light, along with its counterpart, hard light, fall under the quality of light category. Soft light and hard light are the two types of light quality that we must know as photographers. And as mentioned, soft light is characterized by diffused light that avoids harsh shadows. An easy way to think of this is a gradient of black and white, with black representing the shadows and white representing the highlights. If the gradient is more gradual with colors such as black, dark gray, gray, light gray, and then white, then this can be seen as similar to soft light with there being a more gradual, spread out diffusion of light. If the gradient is more abrupt with a distinct line of black and white with no gray in between, then this can be seen as similar to hard light where there is no diffusion and the contrast is more sharp. Now, the question remains, when should you use soft light? As photographers, we'll want to use soft light when we want to avoid harsh shadows on our subject and instead have gentle, diffused characteristics. As a portrait photographer, soft light is my go-to lighting for clients as it will minimize any wrinkles, lines, or blemishes they have. You may be wondering, should portrait photographers always use soft light? And the answer is no. Many fashion photographers often shoot in midday when the light is very hard and harsh creating strong contrast on their subject's face. But because fashion photography is often about creating a statement and having a look that pops out, it works in some cases like that. For example, here's an image I took during midday sun to create a harsh, bold look. So in summary, whether you take portraits, product photography, landscape photography, macro photography, etc., use soft light when you want to diffuse light where the gradient from light to shadow is gradual and not abrupt. In order to create soft light in photography, we have various techniques and tools at our disposal to diffuse or scatter our light source to create soft light. Just remember, it's all about having a light source and then making the light rays less direct and reducing their intensity of shadows. If you simplify it and just boil it down to that root concept, then you can come up with some very creative ways to create soft light, as you'll see later. So let's look at seven of my favorite ways to create soft light in photography. The first way to create soft light in photography is to use natural diffusers. If you photograph during the day outdoors, then your main light source will most likely be the sun. Now, as mentioned earlier, in order to create soft light, we need to diffuse our light source. Well, how do we diffuse the sun? And the answer is to use natural diffusers. The two natural diffusers we can use include the clouds and shooting in the shade. Clouds act as natural diffusers by spreading the sunlight evenly and creating soft light. While overcast days can be gloomy to some, to photographers, it presents an opportunity to go out midday and take some flattering photos with soft light. The other natural diffuser is by using other objects and shooting in the shade. For example, shooting in the shade of a tree, a building, etc. If you have to photograph midday when the sun is harshest, finding a shaded area and then shooting in the shade can provide a softer light compared to the direct sunlight. When you photograph in the shade, the direct rays of the sun will be blocked and the light will be more diffused. The second way to create soft light in photography is by shooting during a specific time of day. That time of day is either during golden hour or blue hour. As mentioned in the previous step, if you have to photograph midday and want soft light, then photographing on an overcast day or in the shade is the way to go. But what if you're photographing during sunrise or sunset? Well, these are actually the best times to photograph for soft light and why the golden hour has become such a popular time for photo taking. For example, here's a portrait I took during golden hour. You can notice the golden hue in the scene and the soft light. The golden hour occurs just after sunrise and right before sunset. During this time, the sunlight is softer and warmer, producing softer shadows and less contrast. The blue hour occurs just before sunrise and just after sunset. During this time, the light is still diffused and is a lot more moody and atmospheric. Personally, for all my client shoots, I always like to schedule shoots around 4pm so we can take most of our photos during golden hour for that soft light, a couple hours before the sun's about to set. The third way to create soft light in photography is by using diffusers and reflectors. A diffuser is anything placed between your light source and your subject that will soften the light. For example, as mentioned in step one, clouds are a natural diffuser to the light source of the sun. 
Some DIY diffusers can include white bed sheets, a thin shirt, or translucent shower curtains. Professional diffusers include soft boxes and umbrellas. Soft boxes and umbrellas come in various sizes and shapes, with larger ones generally producing softer light. While I won't get into the intricacies of how to use these in this video, the main thing you need to know is that their main purpose is to create soft light. Personally, when I'm using my studio light for in-studio portraits, my softbox is my go-to diffuser. And when I'm outdoors taking natural light portraits, an umbrella with my speed light is my go-to diffuser. While I don't use it much personally at the moment, reflectors are another popular way to create soft light. Uh, reflectors don't soften the light directly like diffusers, but they work by filling in shadows by bouncing the light, creating an overall softening of the lighting on your subject. And that leads me to my next tip. The fourth way to create soft light in photography is to bounce your light. If you're photographing with an artificial light source like a flash, strobe, or speed light, and you don't have a diffuser, then a clever way to get soft light is to bounce your flash. This technique is very popular for photographers who photograph events such as in nightclubs or other venues. In order to do it, you can place your flashlight source facing towards a ceiling or a wall at an angle that will hit the wall and then bounce back onto your subject, softening the light in the process. For example, here's an image of my practice mannequin head before bouncing the flash. Now, I'm going to bounce the flash against the wall by turning my flash to the left so it bounces on the wall and then back onto the side of my subject. Here's what that image looks like. If you don't have a wall near you, you can also bounce it against the ceiling by turning your flash up towards the ceiling. Here's what the image looks like when bouncing it against the ceiling. While I don't recommend this technique for professional portraits and recommend either shooting in the shade, if outdoors, or using a diffuser like a softbox or an umbrella, this is a quick and dirty way to try to get some soft light. The fifth way to create soft light in photography is to use semi-transparent material. I hinted at this technique when I mentioned that some photographers have used a white bed sheet to act as a DIY diffuser. Using semi-transparent material and placing it between your light source and subject is a DIY way to soften the light and get a creative look. Some semi-transparent materials that are popular include frosted glass, fabric, a thin shirt, or other types of sheets. I'm going to be using my speed light for this example. For example, I'm going to place a thin white shirt over my speed light to act as a diffuser. Here's what that image looks like before adding the diffuser. As you can see, the light is very hard and not soft. Here's what the image looks like now when I add the shirt as the diffuser. And as you can see, the light is a lot more soft. The sixth way to create soft line photography is to use window light. This tip is if you're photographing indoors. Using indirect natural ambient light such as light coming through a window is an easy way to create beautifully soft and even light. To leverage it, you can place your subject near a window, preferably using some popular angles like 45, 30, or even 90 degrees from your subject. This is a natural way to simulate artificial lighting with a diffuser. For this example, I'm going to be using a window in my room. Here's what the image looks like when the blinds are closed. Now here's the light created from the window. If you focus on portrait photography, then you might have heard about balancing the ambient light with your flash. Um, oftentimes when you're indoors, such as a studio setting or even in a house, knowing how to balance the ambient light coming from the windows with your artificial light is crucial. It might sound complicated, but it's actually pretty easy to do if you have a strong grasp of exposure and the three elements of the exposure triangle, which are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I made a separate guide on that, so be sure to check that out if you're not familiar with those terms. Personally, the way I like to balance ambient light with my flash is to first get my exposure settings a tiny bit underexposed, about minus one on the exposure meter. Pay attention to where the light is coming from, then either place your artificial light on the same side where the ambient light is coming from, or on the other side of the face, depending on if you want a more contrasty, moody image or not. For example, I'm going to place my studio light and softbox on the same side where the closest natural light source is coming from. By doing this, I can add on to the light caused by the window, making it look more natural and adding a Rembrandt light effect as well for a bit more contrast. Now I'm going to place my studio light and softbox on the opposite side. By doing this, the image is a bit more flat all around. The seventh way to create soft light in photography is to experiment with the distance between your light source and your subject. If you're using a diffused light like a softbox, then generally, moving your light closer to your subject will produce a softer light due to the principles of light falloff. This is because the distance affects the falloff rate of the light, which is how quickly the light intensity decreases away from the light source. A closer light source will have a more pronounced falloff, further contributing to the soft appearance by gently grading shadows into the highlights. For example, I'm going to place my softbox very close to my subject. Here's what it looks like when the light source is close. Notice the soft gradients from blacks to whites. If you place the softbox further from the subject, then you will have more of a flat looking light, and it's still soft, but there really isn't any contrast for soft light to appear. 
For example, I'm going to place my slot box further back from my subject. Here's what it looks like when the light source is further away. Notice how the light is a lot more flat without soft light being really able to present itself. If you're using a light source without a diffuser, then the opposite is true and placing it closer to your subject will create more intensity and harsher shadows on your subject. For example, I'm going to remove the diffusion material on my soft box and place the light source close to my subject. Notice how the light is a lot more hard and harsh. If I move it further back without the diffusion material, then this will help in the light a little bit. Here's what the image now looks like moving the light source back. In conclusion, that's everything you need to know about soft light and my seven favorite ways to create soft light in photography. Soft light is an essential lighting quality type that photographers should know, especially if you shoot portraits. And in order to fully understand soft light, try out the tips and techniques I mentioned in this guide and experiment with different angles and setups and observe the effects on your subject. Good luck and have fun. Thanks for watching.